I mean, my earliest memories uh, coming to the Kelvin Hall was actually way back in the early 50s with my granny. You know, because that was a big treat for... I was the youngest of, of three in our family, so my big brother and my big sister and my granny and mother, cousin, that was our treat. They brought us to the Kelvin Hall Circus, you know, and as you went in the door, my first memories were you came in and there was, there was bright lights just to your left-hand side and that, that was you entering a dreamland for a kid, you know, so... That, that that was great, and then the, the finish in the evening would we would go to the the circus, and the circus was at at the back, where, which is now where we held the boxing, and uh, that that was totally transformed. They've still got the boxes there that that my granny used to to rent for us for the night, so that we could enjoy it, and, and she could keep an eye on all the beans. So so it was it was a great time, but that that was my earliest memories, you know, that, that uh, way back in the early fifties. Um, they, then. For, for my sporting side, the, the night that, that kind of started a dream was, was Chick Calderwood, who was managed by my dad and was was uh, the British and Commonwealth champion, or the Empire champion, as he was in his day. He, he fought uh, Willie Pastrana, Willie the Wisp from uh, America. And Willie the Wisp, he was managed by Angela Dundee. Now, Angela Dundee, as everybody knows now, was a famous guy with we catch this clay. So that started that started the early memories of meeting, you know, the major players in, in, in the boxing world. But I was I was only a kid. I was eight years of age, but I still remember it. It was in the big Kelvin Hall, you know, and, and we, we had Billy Rafferty who went on to become a, a, a world famous referee and uh, but was one of the great fighters at that time. He fought another boxer by the name of Angelo Primi. You know, so it, it, it was a great night and Calder would win win the fight. So that, that started my week and a bit that I wanted to be a boxing promoter. I didn't want to be like my daddy and be, be a manager. I wanted to, to, to have the bright lights and, and the crowds and the people surrounding us, you know. So I was quite, I was quite fortunate. And then, then, then you, 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 you go forward a, a few years and you could... You, Jack Solomon, who was possibly the be, best and greatest promoter that Britain's ever had, he came to promote in Glasgow, and I held up the, the round numbers, which was in the days before the, you know, dolly birds with bikinis and t-shirts and so forth. But my brother had done that, that before me, so that 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 was great. But it it was it was really Jack Solomon's that whetted your appetite because Solomon's was always a, a, a man for perfection, and he could tell you where. Where, where the boxers made their entrance was round the back, was where they used to keep the elephants at the circuit, and the dressing rooms and stuff like that for the performer. And you came round that way. So the minute the spotlight went on, Jack knew how many steps it was from that entrance to the first step of the ring, and he had changed in his uh, changed his dinner suit into a white jacket. And he he was the ultimate showman, but it was the, it was that it was that perfection that really really mattered for me. And, and even at an early age, that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be, you know, Scotland's answer to Jack Solomon's. And we, we had great times, and I seen Calderwood here boxing, boxing against Henry Cooper's brother, Jim. Calderwood was very fortunate that night, he got a draw. I seen Calderwood um, fight, fighting against Eddie Cotton. Eddie, Eddie Cotton, he, Calderwood definitely won it. That was, that was probably one of my early remembrances of boxers being robbed. Calderwood was robbed against Eddie Cotton. And I went in and I gave the referee such dog's abuse. I gave him major dog's abuse. And he didn't take kindly to it. But yeah, that, 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 was, the, that was the beginning of another story because I'm still used to giving referees dog's abuse if I don't agree with it. But the, the referee wanted to report, you know, a kid, you know, an 11 year old boy or something. He wanted to report him to the, to the boxing board of control. Yeah. Did, did it bother me? No, but it probably made me slightly infamous at that time, you know, because it was reported in all the papers that, that I had uh, verbally abused the, and in and, and my, my opinion, rightly so. Even even 50 years later, I was I was right in, in Calderwood. So so we had we had a great we had a great night there and, and seeing that. But I mean, then we fast forward it, and the night, you know. Pat Clinton won the world title, 18th of March, 1992. That, that was all the years of preparation, all the years of apprenticeship, all the years of seeing things, all, all the years where 
when I, there was something that I wanted to do. I'd promoted um, in conjunction with Mike Barrett in 1988. I'd done um, Wolf Jensen against Gary Jacobs, which was fine. Bad apartment. But when I'd done 1992 with Pat Clinton, you know, the prodigal son had returned to England and, and I had the fortunate uh, experience of managing him and then promoting my very first world title fight in the Kelvin Hall, the Theatre of Dreams. That, that was me. So I, I was sorted, you know. And that, that night, I'll live forever. I still watch the video. The video still tells me at the end, and I wait for the result. No, the result. It was 1992. But I still sit with trepidation, waiting to see, is this, is this how we do it? Are we going to get the verdict? I, got, I know in 1992 we got the verdict, but the, the, the whole, that whole experience, you know, it was great. You know, that, 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 that was everything that I had worked for, everything that I had learned, you know, because remember that I had come through a lot because when Jim Walt won his world title here against Fred Petalua, I was a matchmaker for Mickey Duff, so I was intimately involved with these big events. I mean, the what, the what night when he fought Petalua, was magic when he fought Robert Vasquez, when he, when he fought Sean O'Grady, when he fought Charlie Nash. They were all they were all great night, you know. And here, yeah, uh, there was always a price to pay, but I would pay it a thousand times over. I mean, I think that if ever I came close to having a physical and a mental breakdown, it probably happened then. Might even have took it. I don't know. But for about six weeks after the fight, I didn't feel well. I ached, every bone in my body ached. Was it worth it? Absolutely, a million times. I, I could just relive the dream, you know. You don't need to go to the Field of Dreams in Chicago, you just need to come to the Theatre of Dreams at Kelvin Hall.